Today I want to talk briefly about using stud cavities to move return air for an HVAC system. So the stuff that we're working with today, the brand name is Thermopan, but uh, I guess the generic thing that you would call it is just joist panning. And what this allows us to do is take a stud cavity and use it as basically ductwork. Now the limitation, like I already kind of mentioned, is that this can only be used for return air. So they don't want any supply air to be going through a joist cavity because there's a possibility that were the HVAC equipment to malfunction and put out hotter air than it's supposed to, they don't want that superheated air to come in contact with the framing members of the building. So just keep that in mind. Don't use it for supply air, but for return air, you can use it in many areas. Now you have to check with the authority having jurisdiction or the AHJ or your city inspector because they do have a lot of times where they have disallowed the use of panning for whatever reason. So you need to make sure that it's okay to use in your area. So I'll show you how we're using it. Uh, in this particular case, obviously you saw down there with that two by four cavity, that's going to be a 24 inch cavity. So the way they make this stuff is either in 16 inch or 24 inch pieces. So this 24 inch piece here is designed such that if we needed to, we could fold these tabs over on the edges and be able to push this between the cavities nicely and then staple it in place. You can see there's just staples going down either side. Now right here, this is our return air that's gonna be coming back to the furnace. So the return air comes across and drops down. Now we've chosen not to use thermopan coming all the way across the ceiling here. And the reason for that is that there's limitations for what can be in the stud cavity, which probably vary per area. But what the inspector told us for this particular part of the country is that you cannot have a continuous running piece of wire going through a joist cavity that is being used uh, for return air. You could have one going across, but then every hole that goes through the framing would have to be sealed with silicone so that the air doesn't basically get pulled from adjacent joist cavities. Now up over on this side, we've cut a couple of holes into those panned sections. You can see right on this end, we have folded this up such that we're able to staple it into this joist cavity nicely to seal off the part that we're not using. And then it comes across the bottom and then leads across to the other side of the wall, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Inside of here, we have cut a hole in the top of our ductwork, then use duct tape to basically connect the tin to the thermopan so that we don't have air leakage or air pulling from where it's not supposed to be. Now we could have probably pulled our return air directly from uh, this side of the wall, but that would have been facing the open area. And generally things on the ceiling are less obvious than things mounted to the walls. So we decided to pull it through the ceiling. The other benefit that this does is it gives the return air a couple more turns before it uh, accesses the condition space. So we're gonna have the first turn coming up in our return air drop, second turn, and then it has to turn up and then over and down. So we have a significant number of turns which is going to reduce the amount of sound that you hear from the furnace blower. So this is a 30 inch return air grill and this is just gonna mount up on the ceiling. You can see how we've cut our holes there so that it is ready to go. And this would just mount right over the top like that. And generally you want to have more return air grills than necessary. So even though like with this particular system, it's a three ton system, we'd want to have at least 1200 CFM of return air going back uh, at 0.1 on the friction rate calculator. That actually isn't too many return air vents, but we'll probably put in about twice as many, which is going to give us more like a friction rate of 0 0.05, which will allow the return air to move nice and slowly so that you don't hear it like pulling. If you put just like the minimum size return air, you're gonna have one big vent that's gonna make a really loud sucking noise really uh, when it is trying to pull all that return air through one particular space. So that's my take on Thermopan. Let me know down in the comment section, uh, are you guys allowed to use this stuff or not? Have they prohibited it in your area? Uh, if they have not prohibited it, <laughs> If it's not prohibited, do you use it? Do you like it? Do you think it's a good idea or do you think it's the worst idea ever? Uh, the other big question, the big debate, is which side faces out? I'm not sure which side the instructions say, 
but I like to see this like cool grid and the words and stuff. But some of my coworkers claim that that's absolute garbage. You need to face the shiny side out. The the little lines are just for measurement purposes. But <laughs> let me know what you think about that. I'll also link to Thermopan or panning products in the description of this video, as well as a couple links to different studies and opinions on what people think uh, about panning and whether or not it's something that should be done or should not be done. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you guys want to keep learning with me, I'll put a couple of videos here on the screen for you guys to check out.